Today we have the all new 2021 Ford Bronco Sport First Edition. Welcome everyone. This first edition Bronco Sport is the top of the line Bronco Sport that you can get. It's not the big Bronco, not the one that a lot of you have heard about, probably been anticipating, but this is the next best thing. And there's really a lot to like about it. This is coming in at around $40,000 though. So we're gonna see if it's worth it. Take it for a test drive, check out all the exterior interior features. Let's get started. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nolan. I do these types of reviews every single week and night reviews in a variety of different videos. So if you wanna check those out, be sure to subscribe down below. And after you've watched this whole video, if you've liked it and if you've learned something, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up down there. If you don't, just tap the thumbs down button twice, but let's get started. All right, let's take a look at all of these exterior details. So this Bronco is built with adventure in mind, but this is not the big Bronco. We'll try to get that one out as soon as we can later on. And like I said, this is the first edition. I have a review of the Badlands, which is very similar if you want to check that out. But check it out. On this first edition, we've got this carbonized gray grill with the Bronco black Bronco writing up front. You'll also see there's a camera up there and I'll show you what that's all about. Even though there's no skid plate right by those tow hooks, there is one underneath the undercarriage. I really love these LED daytime running lights, the LED headlights, and you've got the blinker in there as well. So this LED up front looks very nice and you've got an LED fog light. What do you think of the circular headlights? I think they look pretty cool. It's definitely classic. And the biggest thing with these headlights is just how cool they look at night, whether the actual headlight is on or even just the running light, they just look really slick. Up on the hood, just like we'll see on the side body, you'll see the decals right there. And this paint color is actually called Area 51. Not only is it a cool name for a paint, but it's also a cool paint color, especially with the black accents, like the black safari roof, those wheels, and the decals. It's kind of like a bluish grayish color. And in my opinion, I like it because it's so unique. Even though you'll see most modern vehicles getting larger and larger wheels, these stick to the off-road routes and have 17 inch wheels with these black wheels on this first edition. And those are actually 29 inch all-terrain tires, which is perfect for what this is going for. Another note is that up front, the side body, and even in the back, you've got unpainted surfaces on any areas that could come in contact with some brush and debris. And then that mirror, there's nothing fancy. It's just your kind of black, plastic looking mirror. You've got a fake badge on the side and then you've got the first edition badge or decal right there. The Badlands one is what I had last time and you've got more decals on the side here. And this is really unique because it's got a safari style roof and you see how it's kind of raised part way through there. The roof rails are also standard here on this first edition and dimensionally this is on the small side. This is not the big Bronco. It's 172, almost 173 inches long, but it's got good ground clearance at about 8.8 .8 inches. And checking out the back, you've got this upright rear design, kind of the same like taillight design that you'll see on some other Ford products with the LED rim around it. And then you've got an incandescent turn signal in here, incandescent, pretty much everything else for the lights. The Bronco Sport badging back here, You've got the tow hook or the uh, tow receiver right there. So that's always nice. And the back end is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now back at the cargo area is where things start to get pretty fun. So first of all, as you can see down here, you'll see glass and door. There's no power lift gate, which is fine for this. You know, some of you might expect it, but watch this out. Press that and then this glass actually lifts up. You don't see that kind of flip up glass hardly ever anymore. So I love that. And check it out, there's like a mountain range kind of etched in right there that comes across. So that's pretty cool. I love the easy access of the flip up glass like that. Then if you wanna open the door, you just press that and then you lift it up and it'll kind of lift itself after a little while. There's a couple other little cool things that I gotta show you. First of all, this is a rubber liner right here. So this is easy to take care of. You've got a light right there with a Bronco illuminated inside of it. That is pretty cool. And we've got these like carabiner hooks. So these aren't just regular hooks. I mean, they're actually little carabiner style hooks on both sides. Plus you've got a 12 volt power outlet and another 1400 or 400 watt three prong outlet. So you're good to go. If you're actually camping and you need some power, you can plug in right there. You've got a cargo light, you've got the soft liner, even the back seats have that rubber liner on them. More carabiners over here. 
And then that button, that light button, let me show you. That actually uses these floodlights. There are floodlights on the back of this lift gate on each side, and you can move them different directions, point them towards you, whatever you need to do. So you can illuminate next to you. This was perfect and ideal for camping or whatever you're doing outdoors. Then under here, lift this up. You've got a good size spare tire. It's not the same tire that you actually have on the outside of the vehicle, but at least it's not this tiny little miniature spare tire. And if you want to fold this down or fold the seats down, you can pop the headrest, push that button, fold it down. And then after you do both sides, you get about 60 cubic feet and it's really tall. So there's a lot that you can fit back here. It's not perfectly flat with those rear seats, but I mean, this is definitely still a large usable space considering the size. And it's actually meant to be able to store a couple of mountain bikes vertically back here. One more thing, a bottle opener built in on this Bronco. Now this Bronco Sport is gonna give you the same key fob that you're probably familiar with with other Fords. I was surprised to see this and the recent F-150 kept the same Ford key fob, but it does work. It is kind of bulky, it says Bronco on the back, and you get remote start standard on here for this first edition. And even though you have the rear opening, it doesn't actually open with that. Like I said, it's it just unlocks it. So it's not a power gate, but starts right up when you want it to. And the way this works is you've got these lines right here to lock it, or there's a sensor in the back to unlock it, and that is just on the front doors. It's not on the back doors, but I'm really happy to say that Ford still gives you their keyless touchpad on the door. So you've got all these numbers right here, so you can actually lock your key in there and be able to get back in, or you can give the access code to somebody else if they need to get in your vehicle. Now let's take a look at these front seats. So with this Bronco Sport, it kind of depends on which trim you get, but we get leather on this first edition, of course. So you've got leather with the stitching in that headrest, and then you've got this kind of unique cloth-like material, which is really soft. You've actually got Bronco, kind of the Bronco emblem in there too. You have some perforations here in the seat, but they are not ventilated. They're only heated but these are actually some pretty good bolsters on the side. I mean, they, they hug you, they're comfortable. The seat is pretty soft as well. You've got some more of that material down here. And these are eight-way power adjustable seats. And this doesn't actually tilt the seat, it's just up and down. There's no other tilting function. So two-way lumbar, no tilt, just height and recline adjustments. I'm kind of surprised not to see a tilting function. And this first edition gives us a manual tilt and telescoping wheel. It is leather wrapped and it's also heated standard on this first edition. And like I said, these seats are heated. They have perforations, but they're not ventilated seats. You can't get ventilated seats and you can't get memory settings on here. But overall, I've been very comfortable in these seats and they've got good headroom too. You kind of have a tall roof in here and I even have the seat lifted up a little bit. So very comfortable. Now taking a look at the back seat. One little thing I want to point out first that I should have said in the front is that the floors are actually rubber lined. So that's a rubber liner right there. You don't have to put mats down. And if you actually do go get dirty and nasty, it's going to be real easy to clean here and in the front. But the rest of the seat looks the same as it does up front. As you can see, you've got the leather with the kind of cloth material insert that looks nice as well. But let's go ahead and hop in. The biggest downfall back here is the fact that the legroom isn't that good, but this is not a long vehicle at all. So you can't really expect too much with that. It's definitely enough and I have good foot space. So that's probably the most important thing for me. There's a little bit of a hump in the middle. And then right here you get air conditioning vents, which you don't always see in this class or this size of a vehicle. So that's nice. And down here is a three prong 400 watt outlet. So check that out. Another really cool feature on the back of each seat, you've got these zipper pockets with a nice liner inside. So you can, you can stuff a lot of stuff in there and you've actually got Molly straps right here. So these are on both sides. You can store some gear, whatever it is that you want, use the zipper straps and check this out. There's even a pocket right here for a phone or for whatever kind of device you wanna put in there. And we've got a center folding armrest with some padding and a couple of cup holders that actually have these little rings. Most of the time these back seat cup holders are tiny and worthless, but these will work. Another thing is that ours does not have it, but you can get a small storage cubby underneath the rear seat. And sitting up tall, because of our safari style roof, it goes up 
and you can fit some really tall people back here. So these seats are just fine, not too bad. The only thing is that they feel a little bit upright and they can't recline. And another quick note is that they definitely cheaped out on the material on the door, but it's probably something tough and durable. Now as we hop in, let's go ahead and start it up. Push button start, foot on the brake. And you always get a cool little graphic on there, even when you shut it off too. Same with this main screen. So that's kind of cool. Just a neat little Easter egg type of thing. And there's the Bronco. Now real quick over on the door, this upper material has a unique texture to it. It looks nice. It feels nice. It's not like super soft and, you know, padded and things like that, but it does have some nice material, a padded armrest right here. That's kind of skinny. And then you've got all one touch automatic windows and a couple of bottle holders. So my bottle fits in that one just fine. How about this one? It can, it's just tight, but I like to see two bottle holders. That's awesome. And back in here, there's even room for an umbrella or gloves or something like that. All of your light controls are on the inside here, including your fog lights. And right in front of us, in a vehicle this expensive, you'd expect it, but of course you get the leather wrapped heated steering wheel. So that's standard on this first edition. Cruise control stuff, volume on the left, and then on the right, you've got information display controls and seeking and voice buttons for your radio. And on this stock, you've got your lane keeping system which is not a lane centering, but it keeps you in your lane if you want. You can turn it off or on. And then right in front of us, we get a six and a half inch display instead of the smaller four something inch display on the other trims. I like the colors of the gauges. I like the blue. The gauges are easy to read, both the left and the right. So you do have some analog physical gauges, but you've got your digital display here. And there's a lot of different things that you can see on this digital display. For example, I like how it actually allows you to have like the speed at the bottom as well as information at the top. And if I get rid of the lane system, then it gives you a big digital speedometer in the middle, but there's quite a bit that you can select in here. So, I mean, even seat belts, your auto stop start. These are all the different options that you can put on here to be able to see. So I think that that's pretty cool. Plus, aside from those information screens, you can see your audio phone and customizable settings on here. Now material wise, some of you are big into what kind of materials go into a vehicle and there's kind of a mix. So you have the same kind of look on the door that you get right here. It's got like a texture to it. It's almost rubberized in a way. And then you kind of have a, a unique plastic here. I mean, this is still plastic, but it's not the same kind of cheap looking, cheap feeling plastic. And it ties down into around the center display and it almost has a little bit of a texture to it too. I like it. It almost kind of looks like a stone. Uh, so that's unique. And then this eight inch display is standard. It's kind of the tablet style. There's no larger, no smaller displays. You can customize the screen. It's sync three and everything is laid out just like you'd expect in other Ford vehicles too. You've got Wi-Fi on here, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a lot of different stuff you can customize, including the driver assistance features, which are all on display right here. So like I said, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it is not wireless, it is wired, but it takes up the whole screen. I like that, that's always good. And the audio system in here, on our model, we get the B&O 10 speaker sound system. And if you haven't seen it yet, I have a second channel where I'm doing exclusively POV drives with binaural audio. And during that time, I'm taking some sound tests with these audio systems. So be sure to plug your headphones in and let's take a listen to that. below that you've got a volume knob and a tuning knob that actually have a nice little rubber liner on them auto stop start can be shut off there and check this out you actually get a front camera so that's just a camera in front of the vehicle they call it an off-road camera you can see wider around the vehicle like 180 degree kind of thing and of course you still have a backup camera shift into reverse with dynamic lines and you have the hitch right there the hitch line and by pressing this plus and minus over here, you can even zoom in on just on that hitch if you're gonna be towing something. And then just down from there, we have a little storage bin, which does have a rubber liner, but it's actually already, it's kind of loose. So I'm sure you could tack that down, but I love little storage cubbies like that, especially when it's got a rubber liner. And then you've got dual zone climate control down here. So you and your passenger can have your own um, temperatures, I like how you can dictate whether the automatic mode has a low, medium, or high fan speed. And 
all your other controls, heated steering wheel, three tier heated seats, but like I said, no ventilated seats. Then down here, there's a wireless charging mat right there. My iPhone 7 Plus fits, even though it doesn't have wireless charging. Then you've got a USB type C and regular USB charging port and a 12 volt power outlet and just a little storage cubby too. Right behind that is our shifter. So this is the dial shifter. It's kind of unique, but it obviously takes up hardly any space. Electronic parking brake, brake hold. So go into drive, press the brake hold, let off the brake and the vehicle is not going to move at all. It'll just hold you in place if you've never seen that before. Bottle holders are decent size. My bottle fits in there. You got one a little bit higher than the other, so you can fit a variety of different drinks in there. And then right here is where we get pretty fun. Goat modes stands for, at least for Ford, goes over any type of terrain. So let me show you. When you spin that dial, you've got several different modes. You've got normal mode, you've got eco mode, sport mode, slippery, and then if we go back the other way, we get our off-road modes like mud and ruts and these cool graphics, sand, rock crawl. And when we do that, let me actually show you. It automatically turned off our traction control and it turned on the four-wheel drive lock and the locking rear differential. So that's pretty cool. We have four-wheel drive standard, but this automatically engages and turns on the locking rear differential. And if you're even in normal mode, you can still lock your rear differential if you want to, too. And this one is called trail control. So what this is, it's like an off-road cruise control. So when you turn that on, you use your set button on your cruise control to set a speed. And then all you got to do is worry about steering. Like if you're going up a rugged hill or something like that, it will hold the speed for you. Right here, I have one complaint. This armrest is nice and soft. It's kind of skinny and it's just low. I mean, I can have my hand there and on the steering wheel, but it's just a low armrest. It doesn't slide forward or anything. You've got a couple of USB charging ports, a type C and a regular, and a pretty good size bin overall. One other little thing is we've got a glove box, but it's not a locking glove box. I feel like for adventure minded people, you know, I think that that would be something that could be welcome. Right overhead, you've got an automatic dimming rear view mirror. And then we've got a sunglass holder up here. Plus, we have a power sunroof with this power sunshade. There's no panoramic roof, but most of you probably wouldn't expect that in here. But this is still decent. The one thing I'm a little surprised to see is that we have the automatic dimming mirror, but we don't have garage controls. But the nice thing is with these visors, the whole visor slides out. So that's fantastic. And then a quick look at visibility. So out the front, first of all, you kind of have just a, a nice brawny looking hood. You've got those hood bulges. And then as we spin around and look out the back, you've got that small window there. You can fold the headrest of the second row down. And it's really not too bad, you know, considering the boxy safari style roof. So for almost $40,000, does this have everything you want? I don't know, maybe. I mean, it has the off-road controls, which are pretty cool and unique that you don't always see. Um, but material-wise and the screen size and things like that, maybe not. So you let me know down below. Now, as we look under the hood, if you saw my first Bronco Sport video, I talked about the three-cylinder engine. Well, don't worry, this one does not get the three-cylinder engine. The Badlands and First Edition are gonna give you this two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine. And it's got a healthy 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque paired with an eight speed automatic transmission. And the good news is if you're gonna be adventure minded, this two liter four cylinder actually gives you extra cooling over the 1.5 liter three cylinder. So if you're gonna tow, you can do it. I don't necessarily recommend it because the tow rating is 2,200 pounds, which is more than most of the vehicles this size. And as a four x four model with this engine, miles per gallon is gonna be fairly low for this size of a vehicle, but it's 21 in the city and 26 on the highway. All right, y'all, let's get going on this test drive. So I'm just gonna give, me a, give you my first impressions right away, and then we'll put the camera on my head and do the point of view drive. But first impression, this is my second time driving the Bronco. I drove it for a short period of time before, and being able to spend more time with it now, not much has changed. I still think it's a little bit of a stiff, kind of a little bit of a bumpy ride, considering the fact that it's not 
uh, a body on frame type of vehicle. You still get independent suspension, but it doesn't mean it's a bad ride. It's just on the stiff side and it still kind of has a fun factor to it. The turbo is fairly peppy. You've got four wheel drive. You kind of sit up high and it just feels kind of fun to drive. I mean, it's just different than anything else that you usually get. Usually these smaller vehicles dimensionally have less power and this has good power. It's got good ride height and you've got big tires on it. So, I mean, there's just automatically a fun factor with it, right? But let's go ahead and throw that camera on and we'll get going. All right, y'all, we're getting going on this point of view test drive now so if you want to see a point of view drive I started doing them on a second channel where I don't talk and I have binaural audio so you can kind of get a feel of what it's like to drive it without me talking but we're starting out just in normal mode here and like I said it feels a little bit stiff you know I kind of like the ride with it it's got an off-road suspension and I kind of, you know, appreciate that. But for a lot of you, you might be a little disappointed with the ride. But let me know down below if you own one or if you have driven one. But in this test drive, I want you to get an idea of the not only the ride comfort, but the handling, the road noise, things like that. And four-wheel drive mode automatically, just in normal mode, pedal down. And there was definitely some turbo lag there, but that's kind of to be expected with this. And overall, I mean, it's just, I like the ride height. I like the seating position, the bulging on the hood. It just looks good. It feels like you're driving something other than your typical everyday crossover. All right, I just put it in sport mode. Get around here. And when I'm accelerating, I can hear some noise coming from the back. I don't know what that's all about. That's kind of strange. But it actually handles quite well for, uh, for being this type of a vehicle. I'm really surprised by that. Pedal down in sport mode. Can you guys hear that back there? What the world is that? I don't know what's coming what that noise is it's only when i accelerate and i haven't been driving this aggressively up until now so i never really noticed it but back to the driving dynamics it does drive nice for what it is for being a little bit higher for having these kind of tires and just this orientation that it is i like it i'm gonna put it back in normal mode i'm not a huge fan of the drive mode dial it's just kind of slow going both ways, but the brakes in here are also responsive. I mean, they uh, are kind of soft once you get going, but you get some immediate feedback right away. And we have the auto stop start system automatically and turns back on, but you can at least turn that off, which is nice. Ford Copilot 360. Uh, the one thing that we don't have is the adaptive cruise control here. That is available, but we have the lane keeping system to prevent you from leaving your lane. It's not a lane centering technology, but we've got blind spot indicators in the mirror. We've got parking sensors uh, backing up, and you've got the backup camera, the front camera as well. So you've kind of got a lot in here. Uh, and this is the top of the line, so you maybe would expect everything just right off the bat, but that's the way it is. So the steering feel for this class or for this type of vehicle, I'd say it's about average. It's kind of right on par. It's not super lightweight and spongy or anything like that. It seems to be just fine. It's a little bit vague, but that's about what to expect. Now we are up to speed here and there is kind of some wind noise and I think that that's expected from the boxy shape. I mean, it's not really aerodynamic at all compared to some vehicles, but we'll get on a rough textured road in a second and I'll let you know what that's like. As far as daily driving, ergonomics wise, 
I really like the ergonomics for the most part in here. Controls are easy to use and see. There's storage cubbies kind of all around. I don't like how low this armrest is, but that's really probably my only complaint. Otherwise, I've been quite comfortable in here. Okay, we are now getting on to a rougher textured road. And now you get some road noise in here, but the road noise really isn't that bad. I mean, I'm actually pretty happy with the actual road noise. Wind noise is a little bit more, but I got decibel ratings and they're really not too bad. Okay, we're just going to get on a little bit of gravel just to get a feel for it. Because I know a lot of you will probably get on gravel and I don't really have a good place to go off road. But this has the big 29 inch tires. Those are good size for this size of a vehicle. There's not a lot of noise. There's no vibrations. There's no rattles. And that stiff, kind of stiff, bumpy ride is actually pretty nice out here. This does have an off-road suspension. And like I said, I don't really have anywhere good to go off-roading, at least not legally, which is the bummer. But you've got the off-road controls. So right here, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and put it in trail control. So I'm gonna push that button and then I'm gonna use my set button to go to five. So five miles an hour. And it's gonna automatically go five miles an hour. I'm not doing anything. And all you gotta do is worry about steering. So if you're really going through like a rough area, you know, and all you wanna focus on is steering, it's gonna keep you going. So that's pretty cool. You can cancel it just with the button there too. You've got your four wheel drive lock and your rear locking differential. So I'm gonna put both of those on and just get on it a little bit. There's no spin, like I said, nothing crazy going on, but you can definitely still have some fun with this. And if any of you have gone on some adventures with your Bronco Sport, let me know down below. But let's go ahead and wrap things up and close out, give me my final thoughts on this $40,000 Bronco Sport. So to wrap things up on this 2021 Ford Bronco Sport first edition, the top of the line Bronco Sport, there's really a lot to like about it. With any of the Bronco Sports, I like the fact that they really made them semi-rugged and off-road ready. I mean, it's not just the name Bronco Sport. They actually did some work to make this rugged and to make it look cool too. I like the aesthetic, I like the feel of the inside and the quirky, neat features that you get with it. But here's the truth, this is coming in at about $40,000. There's a lot of different ways you can go with your money for $40,000, but this is really unique. Now, I don't know if I would pay that much for it, but I've got to say, I think a lot of you would like this and like exactly what it's offering. And it's got a, a unique market that it's going after, but it can, it can apply to so many different people for just a regular smaller SUV. But I truly appreciate y'all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to go down there and smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe for more weekly reviews. Thank you so much and have a great day.